Hello and welcome back to the Gorilla Biker and today what we're going to be doing is talking about this bike, the BMW S1000XR. This is the Mark II I suppose if you want to call it, or it's a 2020 model. Um, and what we're doing is a commuter review. This commuter review will be done a little bit differently to my previous ones because it's winter now and <laughs> it's kind of dark all the time. So I've taken footage over the week uh, using this bike and it has been used for one week up and down to work. Um, and I'm going to overlay that footage on this while we talk about my usual bits uh, that we're going to hit upon. So uh, if you want to hear about how it is to use a 2020 or 2021 BMW S1000 XR for commuting up and down to work every single day of the week, uh, in all weather types, this did not get a rest even on the crappiest of days, then uh, stay tuned. So first what I want to talk about is what I always start my reviews with, comfort. Because if you're not comfortable on a bike, um, you're not going to enjoy yourself up there most of the time. Obviously, some things you can uh, make excuses for, like sports bikes, because they're just wonderful anyway. Um, but how is the comfort on this? And in my first ride review of this thing, um, I thought it was a comfortable bike. After riding it for a week, it is so comfortable, uh, especially for a taller uh, person like myself. So to get the old facts out in the open, I am six foot seven, or around about 200 centimeters tall. I weigh about 128 kg at the moment. It's been a bad month. <laughs> or 200, and, I don't know, 70 plus pounds, 280 maybe, I'm not sure actually on the conversion there. Or around about 20 something stone. So I'm not a light person and I'm not a small person and this thing fit me lovely. A um, Couple of things though that I would like to point out is the seat. So the seat, while it does hold your buttocks nice and firmly and is really, really, really comfy. If, like me, you like to move around a bit on the seat, um, <clears throat> you can't. Uh, it's, it's very much a, this is where you're sitting, which, it, look, is nice in a way, but if you, if you do like moving around on your seat a little bit more, then it is very restrictive uh, with those kind of uh, cuppy bits there. So, yeah, that, that's one thing that, just to point out straight from the off, is that little, that little, little, little tidbit um, is kind of not so great. I, I personally would like a seat where I can move a little bit more on, um, but at the same time, if you if you had that, you might lose some of the comfort that does exist there, which is absolutely fantastic, to be honest. It's, it's, it's really quite lovely, especially this piece here at the back that holds you in position when you accelerate hard on this thing, which you will do a lot <laughs> because it's it's fast and it's fun, it's fun to ride fast. Um, other things then, obviously look, the seating position on this thing is absolutely fantastic. So, some things that add to the comfort as well are the, are the extras. This does come with heated grips as standard, I do believe, um, from factory. Uh, it also has cruise control and everything else. And I've long been a naysayer of a lot of technology, but I will say uh, cruise control uh, for up and for down to work on the motorway because when I go to work, uh, it's the same route I use for the other bikes. Um, I go to work on the motorway, with, well it's actually about 50% motorway, the other 50% is getting to the motorway, but you know, when you use a motorway it kind of dominates the, <laughs> the, um, the, the conversation. It's only about 15 minutes I think total on the motorway, or maybe 20. Um, but either way, that's where you get onto the motorway, turn on cruise control, and I just sit back and listen to music. And I will say um, that was pleasant. It was a, a time in the morning you could just kind of switch off a little bit. Obviously you can never switch off a huge amount on a bike, but it just let me kind of, I don't know, mentally kind of just tune out a little bit from everything that I was doing because oftentimes in the morning, I wouldn't be as engaged as I will be in the evening anyway. It's, it's very much you're going to do a job, you know, it's not something that I take a huge amount of enjoyment out of anyway in the morning. I do, I'm happy I'm on a bike, but actually the cruise control did make it I don't know, it, it, I don't know why it helped, but it was just nice. Set the cruise control, don't worry about it and away we go. That was, that was pleasant. Um, what else then? Yeah, the really wide bars on these are lovely. Um, the one thing I did notice is uh, riding behind trucks and stuff, if you got caught in traffic, uh, the wind that comes off the back of a truck, if you ride a bike, you know what I'm talking about, the kind of what head wobble you can get if, as that wind hits you. It does very vaguely affect the bars and you can just ever so, just feel it ever so slightly. Now I didn't notice that in the summer when I was using this bike, but in the winter obviously, uh, uh, Stephen, yes, the air is denser, that good winter air. It's, it's colder so it's denser and I don't know if that having an effect, maybe, 
or maybe it's just the turbulence I didn't notice it as much before but yeah behind a truck or a or a van or something that's kicking off a lot of like turbulent air I did notice just ever so slightly in the handlebars now the steering damper dealt with it all it was never anything that was overly bothersome it's just I just noticed it and I think it was worth mentioning that obviously if anything like that does happen it takes away from the comfort for me just a smidge um, because obviously you're focusing on that and just kind of monitoring it one of the other things then that was nice is the fact that this does have a range until empty on it. So oftentimes when I'm obviously up and down to work on the Magna or the Jixer, uh, they don't have fuel gauges so I have to make sure that I reset my odometer uh, every single time or my trip meter so that I can monitor my mileage. Same with the CBF to be honest, the CBF has a fuel gauge but it's pretty much useless. It goes full, 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 empty and then again if you don't have the trip meter reset, it's nothing. But it was nice to have on this that I knew um, it doesn't matter, I don't have to reset anything, I could just fill it up and check my range. It's a nice to have, not something that I'd buy a bike over to be honest, but it, it, for, for, for the comfort of your commute, it definitely did add to it that little bit, just being like, okay, how much do I have left? Fine, I can go to work and fill up on the way home. It's, it's a nice thing to have, it's a nice thing to have. Um, other than that, it does have a quick shifter, both up and down, so quick shifter and auto blipper and that was quite nice uh, again just adds to the comfort a bit you're not clutching and stuff on the way to work i know i'm making this sound like a lot more than it is but it's all these little bits do add up um, and i i just i have a massive horn for quick shifters anyway they're fantastic best piece of technology ever invented for bikes some people might argue that efi is the best technology invented for well efi wasn't invented for bikes actually yeah, if I was invented for cars and then transferred over to bikes. Quick shifters are the best technology ever invented for bikes. I can't really stand by that statement, but I'm, I've made it. <laughs> so there you go. Um, other than that, the weather protection comfort wise, weather protection is actually really good. Uh, better than I expected, to be honest. You'll see in some of the clips now, uh, I did get like a lot of rain in the night on this thing. I had my full rain gear on, but even at that, there wasn't actually that much hitting me. Um, the screen in its taller position definitely helped and I'm not sure what magic uh, BMW have done with the lower fairings but they do actually angle a lot of the uh, water and spray away from you just kind of knocks, knocks it off to one side I don't know is that intentional but it did work which is nice so again props to BMW for that does work one thing I do need to say here though if you happen to be a taller individual the tallest setting on the screen is not enough um, I could not have ridden this bike uh, on the motorway without my earplugs comfortably um, without modifying that screen. Even in the tallest position, uh, obviously I'm, I'm sitting just a little bit too high so you're getting a lot of loud air. Whereas if you tuck in behind it, it's beautiful and silent. So for a shorter rider, this thing must be absolutely magnificent. Um, let me know if you're a shorter rider who has ridden one of these or owns one, let me know. But I don't know. I think, I think it would be absolutely fantastic uh, to, to be able to be down behind that screen all the time and just hear like silence. So yeah, that, that's one thing. If you're a taller rider, that screen, uh, you're gonna need to get an additional piece for it, one of those little flappy bits or a taller screen full stop. It, it, it doesn't do the job that it's intended to do. And that's just, uh, that, that's it really. The last thing I will mention on, on comfort for commuting is uh, the headlights. So obviously if you commute, then as you get towards winter and everything else, if you use solely your, your bike, um, being able to see at night is important. And the lights on this bike are absolutely incredible. Um, they're really, really good. And it's one of the only things, I made a video recently as well on did this bike spoil me? I'm not sure it'll be up before or after this video. Um, but they're the one thing that going back onto my older bikes, I'm gonna miss is those those headlights. They are absolutely phenomenal. Like 100% modern technology lights. Wow, <laughs> they light up everything. Now I've obviously been in modern cars that have lights like that and uh, they're obviously also very, very good. But to have that same beam pattern and same coverage and distance and lightingness um, on a motorbike is just it's a game changer and it's one thing that I honestly would look at buying a newer bike in future with those type that style of headlights like LED modern he headlights for commuting and, and nighttime riding because they're just they just light up everything they're just light up everything they're really really good 
So then we want to talk about the practicality of this machine a little bit. And how practical is it? Well, um, just, just to get in there pretty much straight away, actually pretty practical. Um, it's not so bad on fuel, we'll get to that in a minute. It has loads of luggage space, so like the, you have the, the, the two panniers, and we'll get to them in a sec. The two panniers are quite large, and the top box is quite large. The top box could be bigger. It's one thing that I will say kind of detracted from, for, from it for me is the size of the top box, and we will have a look at them all in a second. And obviously the panniers being side opening panniers, they're just not as functional as top opening panniers. But they all fit the bike really well, so they don't take from its envelope. The bike is still really easy to filter on if you want to filter uh, in traffic or lane split, obviously, I know. It's illegal in most places in America, for instance, which is madness, you should be allowed to do it. But anyway, um, it's, it's quite easy to do. Uh, it's a very easy bike to ride with the quick shifter. Um, it starts up, <laughs> first press the button every morning. Obviously, it's incredibly new, it would want to. Um, but it just kind of made life easy. As Now, it, was it any easier than CBF? No, and obviously, uh, if you watched the very first episode of this series, um, I would encourage you to go back and look at the CBF. The CBF is my control, it is the bike I use to commute. Um, and comparing this to this, they're very, very similar overall, to be honest. Um, you know, the CBF is the bigger top box and whatnot, which, like I said, does take away from this one a little bit. Um, but otherwise, you know, it's, it, Turns on, first turn of the turn, press of the button. <laughs> it's um, it's nice to ride. Obviously, like I said, comfortable, plenty fast for overtaking if you want to overtake. Um, it has the luggage space. It has a comfortable seat. Um, it's it's good. And one big thing for me is um, you know how how often do I have to fill up my tank? With the CBF, it's once every two days. So on the second day, on the way home, say I'll fill up. Uh, it is the exact same with this. It does the same, it, it, it holds more fuel than the CBF, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'll check, put that on the screen if I'm wrong now. Um, but it does the same kind of, I suppose, overall distance, whether it's using slightly more fuel or slightly less. We'll get to that in a second. Um, but it does the same amount of trips. Uh, the Jixer obviously was, you gotta fill that once a day. Same with the Magna, that has to be filled uh, once a day because the Magna will only do 100 miles. The Jixer will only do around about the same, I think. Um, or not a whole pile more anyway. So I usually do about, I think it's 80 miles a day. Uh, if I take any detours on the way home, then obviously I do more. So it's very important for me from a practical perspective that I don't have to fill the bike every day. There's a huge difference between having to stop at a petrol station once per day or once every two days. You'll know what I'm talking about if you have to do it. It's a mental thing. It's like, I just, I don't want to. I don't want to stop there again today. I, it's silly, but it's true. So let's have a look at these. Uh, this luggage now. So I will say, and I haven't cleaned this bike yet because we have to talk about how good it looks dirty. Uh, opening stuff is very easy. So the key goes in, turn it to that position, push it in. Yeah. Handle pops out. Click the handle out. Uh, oh, I didn't pull it out fully. <laughs> and there's your storage space. So. This only just about fit my work backpack with my laptop in it and my lunch. Um, it's really not a big volume. Like comparing it to the CBF, uh, I don't know a size comparison is gonna work, but like that's the CBF one over there. I would estimate it is about 1.8 times bigger. That's what I'm gonna say. It's nearly, it's nearly twice as big. It's nearly twice as big. And I get it, you know, what BMW I'm sure we're going for is having these look sporty, uh, which it definitely does. And maybe it's also for wind because this thing is, is considerably faster than the CBF. Um, I'm not sure, but yeah, it's it's fine. It works. So, uh, and they're also very nice. These are obviously the, uh, as it says right there, these are the BMW um, built in, not built in, the luggage you can get with BMW. So here again, you'd say you turn it to release, push up, this little switch opens and there you go. Um, so it, these are big, these are quite big. I know you're not gonna see it cause it's dark, but um, they actually work quite well. The one thing I did notice is it's quite easy to accidentally not close this. Uh, so bear that in mind. And then to lock it, just push that back down fully and uh, turn your key. So, I mean, look, they're, they're nice. There's plenty of storage space there. And obviously as well, one thing is, say if you were taking a gym bag to go to the gym, um, there's loads of space to tie on 
uh, straps here and put a gym bag across the back seat. So, I mean, overall for that stuff, definitely a practical bike. Um, it's very good. Now we'll talk about fuel economy. So I'm just gonna transfer you to uh, me in the past uh, talking at the actual fuel station uh, right now. So that worked out at seven liters per hundred kilometers or 40 mpg UK or 36 mpg, no 33 mpg US. It's not actually bad, it's better than I expected. And you're back! So <laughs> yeah, there you go, there you have it. The bike, um, it does about seven liters per hundred kilometers and the good, the good thing is was my actual maths based calculations on how much fuel went into the bike versus how much mileage I traveled um, directly correlated with what the onboard computer was telling me it was seven and seven so that's a good thing because it, it just means the computer is telling the truth uh, which is always nice not that it's lying to you intentionally but it's just that it's it's a good well-tuned system so you can trust what you get out of that I, f I, I believe um, I think I said it in another video anyway it's uh, the clip it's 40. Uh, MPG UK and about 33 MPG US. So, I mean, from a big touring, sports touring bike with 165 brake horsepower um, and f like all of the luggage on it, I think 40 MPG, seven liters per 133 MPG, that's a bloody good return, especially since I rode this like I ride my bikes. You know, I had fun where I wanted to have fun and to return that level of fuel economy, I was very, very impressive. So overall, honestly, nothing I can take away from, from a practicality perspective. It is a practical bike. It's got the hand guards as well. I forgot to mention them in comfort actually. So just to give them a quick shout out, they did help with the heated grips. Um, it just all adds to it, you know, comfort and practicality kind of go hand in hand. If you have a really uncomfortable bike, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be practical to use it every day. Um, so this, this one obviously did check all those boxes. It had the storage, relatively good on fuel and was, supremely comfortable and um, so yeah it, it, it worked um, it was it was quite nice oh uh, one thing I forgot to mention as well on practicality is uh, these boxes are really watertight I just wanted to say that they're actually really like that they're waterproof there's no not a drop got in all week uh, very impressed now we're going to talk about fun now obviously I know how fun this bike can be because I had it out in summer um, previously. Well, it wasn't summer, but it was much drier and brighter, so I had a lot more fun on the roads than I did coming back from work uh, these days. But I will say that if, you ha if you're like me and you, you just do the slog of going to work in the morning on your bike so that you can enjoy it on the way home, um, it's a fun bike, definitely a very fun bike. If I had to rate it, um, it's gonna be like eight out of 10. I'll tell you why it lasts a couple of points in a second. Um, it's a very, very fun bike, absolutely. This thing begs to be ridden fast and thrown into corners. It's, it is a bike made by people who like fast bikes, without a shadow of a doubt, who ever designed and tested this and put it together, they know, they, they like to go fast, 100%. <laughs> and it's not even about the speed for me, it's about you know, putting a bike into a corner and just popping it out of it, you know, nice and quick. I love doing that. Obviously I was restricted a little bit on the way home because of the weather, um, but that didn't take away from how fun this bike was, to be honest, because, and this is where the electronic aids are gonna come into it a bit. I haven't mentioned them yet, but um, they did add to it a little bit because in the weather uh, you did, it's weird, it's like having a safety net that I never really worried about before because I never had it before, but now that I know it's there, it's kind of like, it's, it's honestly, it's very strange. It's having a little thing in the back of your head just being like, okay, that's there watching me all the time. And I've never had that before on a bike uh, up and down to work, which is obviously, you know, where it's, it's where you put your most mileage in realistically, um, which is depressing. <laughs> but, you, you know, it's, it's where obviously accidents could possibly happen if you're tired after work or if you're tired going to work. So um, it, it was nice to have that little, that little bonus safety feature uh, tied in there, definitely. Um, what took away from the fun, uh, what took away from the fun obviously is this is not my bike, <laughs> it's my uncle's, 
which did, uh, obviously, that's obviously one of those other things in your mind that you're worrying about. Uh, not worrying about, but it's just there. You're conscious of it is the right way to say it. Um, but other than that, it's also worth a lot of money, um, which again, something in my head, whether it's mine or my uncle's bike, uh, I think that would be there and how much money these things cost. I think these are like 20,000 euro new. Um, so that obviously plays on your, on your mind a little bit. And then one thing which is kind of like something that is, it's some, it's weird to even say it out loud. It's almost too fast for the way home because like first and second gear, if, you're, if you want to have fun, they're just, like if you rev out second gear, this thing is moving. Um, which on the back roads home, the Jixxer is more fun. Um, being completely honest with you, the Jixxer is more fun because it's, it's, that, it's, that, it's just enough slower that you can kind of use your gears a little bit more and have a little bit more fun. That's why this is 8 out of 10 and the Jixxer I think I gave 9 out of 10 for fun. Um, you know what I mean? It's, 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 a, it's a small thing. It's, it's a weird thing that if you haven't experienced it, I don't know are you going to get what I'm saying, but it's just, it's almost too fast. Almost too fast. It's 165 brake horsepower and you know it. <laughs> and it also has like in dynamic, I mean, it goes, um, has the quick shifter and everything else. So, I mean, that's one thing to be aware of is sometimes it is actually more fun to ride a slow bike fast than a fast bike slow. And I think this is one of those bikes that on the way home from work, um, it epitomizes that statement. I know a lot of people are gonna disagree with me on that and that's absolutely okay. Um, every rider is different, everybody rides differently. For me, this is just, it's too easy to go really fast on it, if that makes sense. And it always eggs you on to do it. It's, it's, it is a bad devil on your shoulder, on this one, and then on this, this shoulder, it's also a devil. There's no angel there, it's just like, what do you think? Yeah, go fast. Okay, what about you? Yeah, go fast, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I suppose I'm going fast then. So that's, that is one minor criticism. Not that it's even a criticism, you know, because I like fast bikes, so it's, it's just a thing. It's a thing I'm saying and, and warning you about that this thing, for fun on the way home from work, it's probably something that you're, you're, you're going to be explaining to your boss why you can't come to work anymore because you don't have a license in about six months. The other thing then that's worth mentioning, because I've mentioned it before, is how would this bike beats park in like a city center or whatever else? It does actually have a, a good like steering lock on it um, that engages pretty easily. I'll, I'll show you in a second. And it does, this This one, I don't know is it stock, but this one also has a, an alarm and stuff. It, that is a nice to have as well if you park somewhere, even in an underground car park or something, that something has an alarm. Alarms, they might not stop a thief, but they do help, definitely. Um, so the louder it is, the better it is. And obviously with an alarm on this thing, it is definitely another nice to have. Um, I know you can obviously install third party alarms on other bikes, so it, this isn't just for this bike, it's just something that this bike has, and that's why I'm mentioning it. Um, obviously it is also very large, um, so it makes it a little bit more difficult to get into the back of a van. Uh, I know that because I've put it in the back of a van to bring it to a track day several times, and it is not easy at all. Another thing then that I was asked about was how does a fancy schmancy modern bike ride in bad weather uh, perfectly. This does have rider modes, I didn't really use them, I left it in dynamic all the time, it still handled everything brilliantly. It is quite tall so in highly windy conditions, my last night on the way home uh, was quite windy and you do feel it because it's so tall but really handled it no problem. So for an Irish winter, uh, so anyone near Ireland Basically, if you don't get a heap of snow, if you just hand have rain and wind, um, it's absolutely fine. Handles it, no problem. Uh, actually, I was quite impressed with how it handled it. One thing to mention on that is there are a pretty new set of Metzler Roadtech 01 SEs on this, which are tires I have talked about in the past. I love them, I think they're brilliant tires. Uh, and that obviously did make a difference too. If it had Wellington rubber on there, I probably would feel different about it. So lastly, before we close this one out, does it look good dirty? So, no word of a lie, this bike is exactly how it was after a full week of riding in crappy weather conditions. I have not touched it yet, it's been cleaned tomorrow before it goes back to my uncle. Um, this is exactly how it looks. So up front, um, we have a little bit of dirt here on the forks and stuff, but really, um, it hasn't stuck to it and there's no treatment on this or anything like that uh, The front mudguard the wheels are quite dirty. They've collected a nice bit of filth nothing too bad 
Um, a little bit of dirt here. Again, nothing major. I'm going this close to show you because you can't see it from far away. On the back guards, in there is quite filthy. And on the swing arm, quite filthy, all right. Um, but everywhere else is quite good. So you can see that some dirt got thrown up in the back. But realistically, overall, if you stand back from this, the only place you can see dirt is the swing arm. It looks really clean. Um, this color, it suits it suits a dirty Irish winter quite well. It, <laughs> and honestly, no dirt stuck to it. It is gonna be super easy to clean, uh, which obviously I'm very happy about. Because in, in the same weather, the CBF, which just got its deep clean, so the belly pan's going back on soon. CBF is a lot harder to clean because you get dirt in all those cracks and crevices and also up in there in the engine, uh, which you can't see, but it's dark. That's why the belly pan has to come off because it gets dirt in lots of crevices. Um, and yeah, that's kind of it. The one place that was weird is it got lots and lots of dirt up on the TFT screen, which I don't understand. I don't know, I don't know where it splashed from, um, but that's one thing. I'll just have to make sure I'm cleaning that okay. So that's it. Um, overall, I think this bike, the uh, BMW S1000XR is a very comfortable, pretty practical bike that's a lot of fun, looks good dirty and has an alarm and stuff. So it's yeah, a little bit harder to rob if you're working in a city or whatever else. Obviously it's big. So if you do work in a city, uh, it might be a little bit harder to park it. But to be honest, this bike, like I said at the very start of this series, the control is the CBF. And this bike is every bit as good as the CBF, um, if not better in some places, like fun because it's, it's, it's so fast. Uh, the only place it does lose, lose out is the storage. The CBF with all its luggage on does have a lot more storage. Uh, the main one being the top box. Uh, like in the summer, I don't have to put the, the panniers on my CBF. I only put them on in winter to store my wet gear and stuff and a spare set of clothes in case I do get drenched in the way to work. Um, but with the BMW, I think I'd have to have the panniers and top box on all year round just for extra stuff uh, if I was stopping at the shop on the way home. Really the top box only stores a bag in my lunch. That's it, it is quite small. So that's the one kind of negative to it. Um, other negatives obviously being it's really expensive and whatever else, so for maybe for commuting, unless you have a really highly paid job, <laughs> it's, it's probably not the bike for you. It also, I mean comparatively, it's nearly as thirsty as my GSXR 750. So it's, it's getting into that sports bike range fuel consumption wise, which is understandable given that it's an engine based off the S1000RR. Um, but that's it really. I mean, if you want one bike to do it all, to commute your weekend, you know, your weekend fun and long tours, this is definitely something like the CBF that could do it all, 100%. Um, I would not hesitate to recommend this to someone on that basis. The only thing I will say is this bike only has like seven and a half thousand kilometers on it. Um, obviously my uncle has not had any problems with it. It's very, very new, so he shouldn't have to. Um, but do look up the reliability yourselves, ask around. The couple of people who I actually know personally who own these bikes have had no issues with them. Um, but I have had comments in the past that say, obviously they have had issues with these bikes or someone they know have, has had issues with these bikes. So it's worth shouting out just to keep an eye on that because obviously it could get quite expensive um, if you're commuting, putting a lot of mileage up and you start to see those problems. Uh, but if you do look at used ones, there's plenty of them up there as well with 44, uh, or one of them was with 44, 40 to 60,000 kilometers uh, from even 2017 to 2018. So they've obviously been pretty well used, um, but it depends on the person. If you want a Honda, buy a Honda. Um, that's why I have a Honda for, <laughs> for that exact reason. Um, it, just, it just goes and goes and goes. So, I mean, based off track record, I can't really comment. This bike has been perfect for my uncle. He also had the last model S1000XR and it was also a uh, perfect form. He didn't have any issues. So I can only comment on what I've seen in person and what I've seen in person is uh, these bikes are pretty, pretty reliable from that point of view. Um, but like I said, do have a look online, look up uh, previous owners uh, reports and stuff. There's plenty of stuff up there that you can look at. I didn't really do that because I don't own this. So it's just not something I'm massively interested in to dig through different forums and look for look for reports on them and stuff. I did ask the people I know personally, and like I said, they all had positive things to say. So uh, if you've watched, thank you very much for watching. I do hope you found this video enjoyable. If you were looking at one of these as an all around bike that you could use to commute on as well, uh, do let me know. 
Um, for those of you who do commute all the time, is it because, like me, you wanted to afford one nice bike and you couldn't afford a nice bike and a car? That's why I did it. Um, or do you just not like cars and you want to use bikes? Let me know, I'm actually interested to know uh, after using it for the week, I got lots and lots of comments and interaction on Instagram, so just interested to see why other people do what I do and your reasons behind it. And yes, as always, a very special thank you to my patrons. Uh, you're all legends, and I know two of you are actually quite interested in this bike. Um, <laughs> again, good to chat to you all week on it. Um, and of course, a very, very special thank you to my uncle. Um, I don't think people realize the support that uh, my uncle Dermot has given me for this channel. He gave me his first BMW S1000XR to review, this one to review on the first ride, and also it has given it to me for a week to put plenty of mileage on, to be honest. I do like 500 kilometers a week uh, commuting, uh, and also to do that review on it. So that's helped out the channel massively. So do leave a note, thanks Dermot, in the comments uh, if you can. I do appreciate it. Just add it to your comment, um, and then maybe he'll read them and know that people care because that's nice. And yeah, thank you again for watching. Adios. Outro crew. I'm honestly, I'm not lying to you, right? And the camera doesn't do it justice either. How good this bike looks after a week is kind of annoying me because obviously my CBF doesn't look like that after a week. It's just the swing arm. It's, I, I think it's just the way they've put the fairings together, protect it really, really well. I'm honestly, I'm very impressed. I'm very impressed. There's no like water streaks left in the engine or anything. There's a little bit on the clutch cover. Uh, you, I can see like two streaks, but maybe that was my leg juice, I'm not sure. But either way, are you impressed with how clean this thing looks? If you've been following me on Instagram, you know what I put it through. Uh, you saw the days I was riding it. It was misty, foggy, crappy weather. And if you know Irish roads, uh, most of them are covered in muck from tractors and stuff like that, which is what's on the swing arm. The swing arm is mostly mud and crap from the road. Uh, which realistically shouldn't be there, it'd be a lot cleaner if it wasn't. But yeah, this is going to get a full, nice deep clean for me now tomorrow before it goes back to my uncle, and uh, it'll be nice and clean again. So yeah, let me know what you think though, I'm honestly, I'm impressed. And it kind of makes my job easier to clean it as well, which is nice. Bye, Outro Crow.